All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, we're going to change pace today and go with something completely different, um, something called an antiderivative. So basically what this is, is this is the opposite of a derivative. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with f prime. So we're going to start with our derivative and then ask ourselves what is the original function. And we're going to learn a lot of techniques for this throughout the year, but we're just going to start with some basic ones today and try and build up our intuition. So, okay, so let's just start. So he, here's the type of question that I'm going to have. f prime of x equals 3x squared. What is my original function equal? So, I mean, hopefully you guys realize, like, oh, x cubed has derivative of 3x squared or x cubed plus 2 or something. But this idea of starting with a derivative and asking what's the original function, that's the new part here. So let's talk about some notation first. So we're going to say that if f prime of x, so the derivative of big F of x, is equal to little f of x. We say that big F is the antiderivative, antiderivative of little f of x. And another phrase we'll use for that is indefinite integral. So you can think about this as like one more kind of step up the chain that if you have f of x, if you keep taking derivatives as you go down the chain, you get to like f prime and then f double prime and then f triple prime. Well, above little f is big F of x, and that's the antiderivative. But if you take the derivative of big F, you get back to your original function f. That's what we mean by, by an antiderivative. Um, another notation we'll use, and this is kind of weird because it's like the same notation we use for a definite integral. Also weird, they just have the same name, is if you integrate or sorry, if you find the indefinite integral or find the antiderivative of little f of x dx, you write that as big F of x. And that statement is saying the same thing as that one that I just underlined right there. Okay, so for example, let's talk about something kind of straightforward. So if you know that you take the derivative of sine of x, you get cosine x. So if you go backwards and ask you, like, what is the antiderivative of cosine x? So this says, or this means, the antiderivative of cosine x is sine of x. And really, when you look at that, you're saying, like, okay, the antiderivative of cosine x is saying, what function f has a derivative of cosine of x. So what is the original function? We take a derivative of that, we get cosine x. And the way we write this, so we write uh, using kind of this the same integral notation that the integral of cosine of x dx equals sine of x. Now I wanted to pause for a minute because are there any other functions that have a derivative of sine of x? Or sorry, of cosine of x? Well, you might know, okay, the derivative of sine of x is cosine x. But what about the derivative of sine of x plus 2? Or sine of x minus 4? Or sine of x plus a hundo? Well, the idea is that if we just add or subtract a constant, those derivatives always go away. So the idea is if you have sine of x plus a constant, that all of these functions will always have a derivative of cosine of x. And the way we do that, the first letter of constant is c. So we say the antiderivative of cosine x is sine of x plus c. And that's just realizing that when you take the derivative of sine of x plus any constant, you're always going to end up getting cosine of x. Okay, so um, let's take a look at just some other basic, exam basic examples and see if we can figure out a pattern. What if we take the antiderivative of, well, let's just start with a simple one, 5 dx. So you're going to see a lot of problems like this in your homework. So what that's saying is what function has a derivative of 5? Well, you may think, okay, what is the derivative of 5? Well, derivative of 2x is 2, derivative of 10x is 10. Oh, it could be 5x. And again, you could just add on any constant like that. So that's how you want to approach this type of problem. We're going to come up with some patterns here in a minute. What about the antiderivative of 2x dx? Well, again, the way I want you to think about this is... What function has a derivative of 2x? 
Oh, you think about this for a minute, and then you're like, oh, bro, it's just x squared, right? The derivative of x squared is 2x. So x squared plus any constant is going to have a derivative of 2x. And that's how these antiderivatives are working. Well, okay, let, let's amp this up. Let's go a couple steps further. What if I ask for the antiderivative of 3x squared dx? And feel free to pause this video and think through it on your own and put your answer down. So what function has a derivative of 3x squared? Oh, it's x cubed. Okay, so again, if you take the derivative of these, and, and when, whenever you're doing some of these problems, uh, two kind of things that you want to remember is one, always remember the plus C. And then two, I always like to check the answer by taking a derivative in your head. So these are great because what you can do is just take a derivative of the right side and make sure you get what you started with it's by taking a derivative in your head. I've been doing integrals literally since before some of you guys were born, but I still take a derivative every single time. So I do this, I'm like, okay, what's the derivative of x cubed plus c? It's 3x squared plus zero. Okay, that's what I started with, good. So take the, take the time, just take five seconds and check your answer and that'll make sure that, that you're on the right track. Okay, what if I ask you to take the antiderivative, not of 3x squared, but just of x squared? Oh, well, let's see, if I had x cubed, that derivative would be 3x squared, but, that, but there's no three here. So what that means, if I took a derivative, those threes would cancel. So you could write that as one third x cubed plus c, because there the threes would come down and cancel. And usually we just write this as x cubed over three plus c. Okay, well, what if we take it a step further, right? What if we take uh, the antiderivative of x cubed? What has the derivative of x cubed? Okay, the derivative of x to the four would be four x cubed. So I need a one fourth. So that would just be x to the four over four plus c. Okay, and in my head again, I take a derivative. So it'd be four x cubed over four. Um, so that would cancel, we'd be good, just x cubed. Okay, let's go one step further. What if we do x to the fifth power? Okay, so x to the fifth power there, uh, well, let's see, x to the 6 has a derivative of 6x to the 5th. So hopefully you see the antiderivative there would be x to the 6 divided by 6 um, plus some c. Okay, cool. And hopefully you're seeing the general pattern. And this is a, a, a rule that you can learn. So this is like the power rule. It's the opposite of the power rule for derivatives. But it says if you take the antiderivative of x to the n, you're going to get x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. So basically, you go one more on the exponent, and then you divide by the same exponent. So this is a great one because it can save us a lot of time. If we have to take the antiderivative of x to the 20th, you could just use this pattern. So raise the power by 1, divide by the new power. Okay, and then yeah, the 21's a cancel. I'd have x to the 20th. That sounds good. Now, this is actually really powerful um, because this works for some other ones too, right? If you have the integral of 1 over x squared, write this as an x to the n. So write this as integral of x to the negative 2. And then you see this antiderivative or this indefinite integral makes perfect sense because you raise the power by 1. So negative 2 plus 1 gives me x to the negative 1 over negative 1 plus c. Okay, you could write it like that. You could write it like negative x to negative 1 plus c or negative 1 over x plus c. Like any of those would be fine. You don't need to simplify. Same thing works if I ask for, I don't know, the integral of like the four, excuse me, the fourth root of x. Well, you should just write that as the integral of x to the 1 fourth dx. Okay, and now, all right, what's that antiderivative? So I raised by 1, so that's x to the 5 fourths. And then just you can you can divide by five fourths, or you can put the reciprocal in front. So you could just say, hey, I want the five fourths to cancel, so I could write that as four fifths times x to the five fourths plus e. Those are equivalent; they're just two different ways you can write the same thing. Okay, so this is a very powerful rule um, and something that I, I really hope you guys take note of and remember. We'll use that throughout the year. This should be same. I'm sorry about that. Uh, one more exception, though, there is an exception to this rule. And this is a special thing. Uh, and the exception might be what happens if you try and take the antiderivative of 1 over x. Now, the smart person here says, oh, that's x to the negative 1. So maybe I can apply that rule. But when you get that, you see, okay, and again, this is the only exception. You see that you get x to the 0 over 0. Can we ever divide by 0? No. Okay, so that doesn't work. So what you really want to think of is what function 
has a derivative of 1 over x. Can we think of any magical functions that have a derivative of 1 over x? Oh my goodness, we can. And in fact, the antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log of x plus c. Now, there is one extra thing you need to take note of. It's actually the ln of absolute value x. And the absolute value signs are crucial. And the reason we need those is, is because this is still defined for negative x values. Right? Like, you can plug in a positive or a negative for the 1 over x. And you should be able to do that for its antiderivative as well. So that's why they put in the absolute value signs there. So that's the exception. If you integrate 1 over x, uh, you get natural log of absolute x plus c. And then any other case where you have x to the nth power, go ahead and just use this rule. Uh, it's a very powerful rule, and I hope that's useful. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video to put some stuff together. Thanks for watching. Uh, bring questions to class.